Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to React Conference 2017. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Tom Okino, and I manage the React team at Facebook. It's hard for me to believe that this is actually just the third time we've put this conference together. Because in the past couple of years since the first one, there's been an absolute proliferation of meetups and conferences for React across the globe. There are now dozens of conferences, hundreds of meetups. And events like this are really important because they help bring this community together. They enable us to communicate and collaborate with folks across the industry facing similar challenges and solving similar problems to all of us. One meetup that I've been a part of recently, pretty frequently, we call React Wednesdays. <laughs> yeah, a couple of React Wednesdays attendees here. Last year at this conference, Leland from Airbnb and I were talking about how the challenges that his team was facing at Airbnb were very similar to the challenges and problems that we were facing at Facebook. And we also wanted to sort of open the black box a little bit from the, the, the React team itself and make it so that we could more like collaborate more openly with people that work outside of Facebook and use React. And so React Wednesdays was born. And the idea is we get together every couple of weeks on a Wednesday, which is uh, you know, just a day when we have fewer meetings, some of us. Uh, and we work on the stuff that we would normally be doing that day, but we do it in the company of engineers from sort of all over the Bay Area. And this has been absolutely awesome for me to sort of empathize with the things that are happening in React and React Native outside of Facebook. This community has grown a lot over the past couple of years. And while it's really, really hard to know in, or estimate exactly how many people there are using React and React Native every day, uh, one proxy that I use every time I have to prepare for a talk like this is the number of people that have the React developer tools installed in Chrome. It's crazy to me that there are half a million people with the React dev tools installed, especially because I know tons of React developers that use React and React Native every day that don't even have these installed. So while this is a pretty good, you know, gives us a sort of like trajectory for, for how much growth there has been in this community, uh, it's, it's not accurate, but it's, it's kind of a, a good proxy. At Facebook alone, we now have hundreds of engineers that use React and React Native every single day. And those engineers have produced tens of thousands of components across our family of products. We use React for a lot of stuff at Facebook, and we're really happy with it so far. Adoption across the industry seems even more staggering. It seems like every time I open a website and I have the Chrome DevTools open, <laughs> you see the little React pop in, and it's like, oh, they're using React now as well. Heck, even futuristic uh, theme parks <laughs> filled with robots are apparently using React these days. <laughs> Sorry if I stole your joke, Ken. <laughs> React Native adoption in the industry has also been pretty impressive. At Facebook alone, we have hundreds of React Native screens in production now across our family of apps. The first one here on the left is our Ads Manager app. This was the first thing that we had in production using React Native, and it's what we call a greenfield or a standalone app. There was no legacy existing native infrastructure for this. We built this app sort of from scratch. But that's not the only type of development we do with React Native at Facebook. We also have the main Facebook app. A lot of people don't know this, but we actually use React for many screens inside of the, the main Facebook apps. We have a lot of work left to do here, but it is in production in that hybrid environment. And more recently, the Instagram team published a blog post about their experimentations with React Native that they started about six months ago. Uh, it's working really well for them. And the best thing about the screens that you feel with React Native inside of the Instagram app is that you can't tell the difference between anything built with React Native and things that are built with idiomatic platform-specific native code. There are also now hundreds of apps in the App Store that are using React Native at least partially, and some of them are using it for their entire experience. The Airbnb app feels absolutely amazing, and you, again, can't tell the difference between what's built with React Native and what's built with proper native code. Now, the reason I bring up these adoption metrics and statistics and things like that is not just because it's impressive, because what we've been able to do as a community over the past several years is impressive. But the point that I want to make is that this is working really well. And I think the adoption is a good signifier to us that we're doing something right. We're on the right track. Frameworks and platforms everywhere are being inspired by what we've done with React. And that is a good thing. 
we're going to continue to invest in React and the ecosystem around it because it's working really well for us. And because we're not done. We have a lot of work left to do. But we're going to continue to improve React. We're going to add features. We're going to fix bugs. We're going to make everything better. And we're, more importantly than the incremental improvements, we're also going to continue to innovate. Again, we're not done innovating with React. We're going to bring it to new platforms like React VR. We're going to make things even better for low-end devices. But the most important part about this innovation is that it's going to happen in place. This is critically important because breaking changes are painful. We don't want to rewrite tens of thousands of components. So you can rest assured that there's always going to be an incremental path from where we are today to where we want to be tomorrow. And we're going to be going through that process with you. You'll never install a version of React and have to rewrite your entire app from scratch. Now, in a little while, Sebastian's going to come up, and he's going to talk a bit about the innovation that we've been doing and the research that we've been doing specifically around performance over the past year on the React core team. But before that, Jing is going to come up and talk a little bit about the investment that we've made so far in React Native uh, at Facebook, specifically. Thank you. Jane, take it away.